Google Labs is their experimental area. And you may have never really dug into it very deeply, but what Google does is they do a lot of experiments. They want to launch them and give people a chance to try them out. And they are doing a lot of different things that make are made available as kind of previews to see whether or not we want to actually use them, what they can accomplish with them, and you can even submit experiments to them as well. So they've got a couple of things that you might be familiar with, uh, like Gemini extensions. The Gemini extensions let you basically add things like Google Flights, Google Hotels, Google Maps, Google YouTube, and Google Workspace which I don't use, but other people do. Google Workspace is their Gmail, Google Drive, Docs, Numbers, you know, et cetera, product slides. And you can add these to Gem Gemini. So when you use Gemini, Gemini can actually pull data and information from these features of Google. And so it's another tool that's out there that some people have been using. I don't know, is Google... Uh, lab, is those Gemini extensions available in Canada? Well, uh, Gemini, Gemini is available, available but I, I never tried the, the extension. But, but Gemini's, Gemini's been available, available uh, about one month, month in Canada. Canada. Okay. Okay. Well, that's one of the things that's out there. There's a, a lot of experiments. Let me scroll up a little bit here. They scroll along here and they've got seminars they're running. These are their latest experiments. They're doing search powered by generative AI. They're doing something with ImageFX that's kind of helping people prompt things. They've got a Gen AI in Chrome. They've got a tool called Notebook LM, which lets you create folders on uh, a website that's just your documents in Google and gives you the ability to let Google search them. They've got Say What You See, helps you improve prompting, Music FX, Catch Me Up With Duet, Help Me Script, Text FX, Poem Postcards, Magic Editor, which is available in Google Photos, does more complex. And we'll, we'll take a look and try these out. Some of them are on wait lists, and you can request to join a wait list if you like, and I'll take a look at it. So one of the things I played with yesterday was this instrument playground. And what it is, is that we can generate play, and compose music inspired by instruments across the globe. Because Google Arts and Culture is a app and a website you can visit. But this basically is going to create a musical composition. So I don't know, somebody asked about a ukulele, but these are things that we can look. So we're going to try some of these instruments. We can type in the name of an instrument here instrument. Okay, so I'm not sure why it, maybe I spelled it wrong. So we can go guitar, harmonica, harpsichord, horn. Some of these are from other parts of the world. Piano, they should have ukulele, you know. There's ukulele. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Okay. All right. So now let's tap go. Yes. Okay. So we're going to get a 20 second audio clip inspired by this instrument for us to compose with. It's generating it. So it, it does take some time a little bit of time, but here's our instrument. So we can add an adjective to get it loud, mellow, moody, if we want to, and change it. But let's just go to next. And here's our 20 second AI generated audio clip. Well, let's take a look at something else on AI <laughs> Playground and Instrument Playground. They've got a couple of other tools that are here as well that we can look at on the instrument playground. There's a couple of things like a drag and roll. You can get, I think I'm feeling lucky, I'm feeling smart. Sometimes you'll get some other things here. Collaborating with a virtual re assistant, Notebook LM uh, gives you the ability to create projects that you can organize. And you can, or it's a free tool, but it's in beta. And Notebook LM will basically give you the ability to do AI on existing documents. You create a, a do Notebook LM account, becomes part of your Google account, and you can upload Google Docs, Google Files uh, to it. And then you can 
apply AI to search those documents for you. So these are a set of documents that are then uploaded by Google into a notebook. And you basically select a notebook, add sources, you can upload documents, you can choose the Google Drive where you want it located if you have more than one drive account. And then you can start using Google Gemini, but only on your documents that you want to work with. So it's an interesting tool that's available to work with in Google Labs. There are tools here. Let's see if I wanted to find, say what you see, help me script, duet AI, poem postcards, project IDX. A poem postcards allows you to send art to a friend. So if you'd like to have a poem created, like a sonnet, you can say someone who loves beaches, okay? And it'll take artwork that it has from its library of art from Google Arts and Cultures, and it'll create and write a sonnet for us. And then you can share the poem with another individual if you want to. So depending on the style you'd like to do and, and create, but you can create it. And so you can do poem postcards with different images as well. So we can generate a new poem based on this image or click on more artwork. And we can bro browse for artists by by artists. So if we wanted to have something like this wave, we could select this. It tells us who it is, where the museum is, it's located. But we then we can also say, I'd like to have a limerick that's associated with this and have it write a poem and it'll write a limerick. So what they're doing is they're, they're kind of prompting us a little bit to create some things. So there was a, once a man named Hokusai, because it's a you know, Asian poem whose art was quite the crazy, painted a wave so big and so brave that it's still famous today. Okay, so you know, we can create a new poem and it gives us the ability to select different styles or odes and use them. Yeah. Are these all images, are these all art images that are, are already created or does it create new ones? This is artwork. I mean, is it like an image creator, or is it using? Is it actually using a, a, a painting? It looks like Karagawa's painting. This is part of Google it, it's Arts and Culture. Hard work. This is using Google Arts and Culture, okay. and Google Arts and Culture is pulling the artwork from its li library of museum artwork that it has available to it from museums that let it let it use it. This is generating a poem postcard to go along with the <clears throat> art that you might choose. So it's not actually creating a, a piece of, of art, AI. It's actually you know, okay. using the artwork to stimulate a poem. So you can, and you can it select. Says, okay. It says on it, you can browse by artist. Right. Yeah. If you have a particular artist that you wanted to browse by, yeah. You can choose by artist, but Google Arts and Culture has a huge library of oh, yeah. museum of quality images that are from museums that participate. Um, and is this, is, this, is this something that's printed up, that you can print up? Or well, is it something that you send as an email attachment? Well, let's try the labs. I think that the share tool gives us the ability to try something. So let's get a sonnet. We'll ask it to write a poem and it'll just create a sonnet that kind of ties to this Degas painting of the dancers. And here it is. So now we have the ability to share the poem with a share tool. Um, so I can send it as a link, but I think it will just take me back to this particular page on the website, unless I did a screen capture but I think it's designed to actually just use this link. So let me copy this link and let me see if I can go into chat here and maybe I can post it in chat, okay? And see what people can see it. Okay. So if you wanna click on that chat, Joe, and let us know what happens All when right, you click on that. I'll get out there and take a look. This is this is Google Labs, so it's it's all an experiment. 
Okay. Where is my chat? I see it. Uh, yeah. you, you see it when you click on it and chat, chat. Okay, so it pulls yeah. it up. So okay. Okay. this is... The link. I see the link. Yeah, you just click on the link, yeah. So now, yeah, oh, let me see if I can... If I click on the link, okay. it's going to open it up. Oh, there it, is. Lo it okay. loads it up. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. There's the poem. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. 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 Terrific. Okay, but it's not it's not something that you would regularly print on a piece of paper or something like that. I mean, you probably could. But. I I don't know what the usage rights are. Maybe on Google Arts and Cultures yeah. because it's images of art, a museum artwork. It's yeah. got to be done that way. Yeah. Okay. Because what you have is if you print this up, you're going to get the share poem button and the new poem button. And yes. whatever that's in the yep. upper right hand corner. Yeah. And he's moving to the stamp, I guess. And They're yeah. trying it out, Case. Okay. They're trying it out. Okay. So let's try and see if we can get say what you see. Are you ready to learn the art of prompting? Okay. I have I haven't used this at all. Include information about the medium, the subject, and the context. A painting of a dog in a field. Okay, let's see. Type your cap, say what you see. Okay, so this is a picture of a horse statue on a table. Have no idea if I'm right or not. It may tell me I'm way off. So this is an AI generated image. This is what's cool about this. This is an AI generated image generated with Google. And this is the prompt that was used to generate the image. So the goal of this is to help you learn prompting better. So I have no idea. It says, take a look at this artwork I generated with Google AI. How would you describe it? So I would Bob, wish I, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you have said uh, statue first? Well, let's, let's try it out. I'm open to suggestions. This is an experiment, statue. Of a, of a horse, horse on, on, the the table. Table. A on a table. On a table. And is it bronze or is it a, a dark wood? Well, let's say in in wood. Okay, I don't know if it's wood or bronze, but let's try wood. And and now we can get an idea of how well we did in guessing the prompt. Let me think. This might take up to thirty seconds. I don't know. Well, what, okay, so here's the AI that it generated for me, and here's the actual prompt that it used to generate that image. A photograph of a dark wooden miniature statue of a horse against a light background, which is kind of interesting. So it had more context. We got 83%, gang, so we did pretty good. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's, that's good. That's, so that really, that's, that's really good. Brilliant. So you want to try another prompt and see how we do? Okay. Sure. Uh, so it's going to show us the AI generated image. Okay. Where is it? Okay. Come on. Uh, not, not getting up there for some reason. So it's an experiment. So maybe it's not working well, very well. Let's try skipping right, it. There we go. There oh, we go. Oh, oh, okay. So how would we describe this? Um, photographic quality of a cat wearing, I don't know what that is wearing. In clothing. Or an apron. It looks like an apron kind of a thing. Wearing an apron or is that a Christmas outfit like a... Well, that's a gown. That's a gown. That's a gown. And a gown? Okay. It's a gown. Okay. Yeah, make it a gown. gown. And would we say it's a realistic photo of the cat? I think so. Yeah, realistic photo, yeah. You want to draw? Photo realistic. I think photo realistic. Short, is short hair cat. Short hair cat. Okay, good. See, I mean, so you can you see what is is happening here is that it's helping us learn prompting. I have no idea what the real prompt was. Isn't it, what kind is that? A tabby? What's the cat? What kind of cat is it? A tabby? Uh, uh, no way to turn it. Fine. I'm not a yeah, cat. I'm not a cat expert. I think that's a tabby. Okay. So let's let's see how we did. That's amazing. 
Nice. It's going to generate a new image based on our prompt. Yeah. And we did 60%. Okay. So what is, here's the prompt that generated this image. A soft focus black and white photograph from the 1900s of a cat wearing a child's dress. There you go. Wow. Okay, and we asked for a realistic I think photo. Said ta ta I think if we'd seen Tabby, we got a, we'd have got a different cat. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, yeah, we would have got a different did. cat, but then. So what they've done. You know, we can tiger strike cat. You know, I think this really helps in in how to set up prompts. It's yeah. it's a ga well, it yeah, gamifies very prompt very engineering, very doesn't it? Hey, it makes Bob, it a game. Bob, it made a mistake. Bob, it made a mistake. We said in black and white. He made the cat black and white. That's true. That's true. That's an error. No, That's a Google error. Well, no, the error is with the prompter, Carl. I'm sorry. The error is with the prompt. That's a Google error. I'm no, 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 no. I think the, the error is in the prompt. The error is in the prompt. Let's try oh, one more, and then we'll take a look like around. So how did we do? We skipped this artwork. So we went through level one, okay? All right, what's the next level? I don't know. Next level is making hard. Okay, include information about the art period and the materials. Okay, remember, art period like Renaissance, Greek, classic, you know, modernist, and whether it's oil, acrylic, uh, I don't know, whatever. So what is this? Well, this looks oh. like a photograph, doesn't it? Well, is it a photograph or is it, uh, or is it a photo drawing of some sort? Yeah, I don't think it's a photograph. No, it's not a photograph, it's a sketch. Yeah, I think it's probably Pen Pencil sketch or charcoal sketch? Black and white sketch. Anybody else have anything they think it is? Open mouth tiger. Snarling tiger. That's good. Snarling tiger. Prominent, prominent teeth. Prominent canine. And it's a white tiger, not yeah. a not a Bengal tiger. That's not a tiger. Well, it, I gotta remember it wanted the media, and this is a sketch with with ink or pencil. Do you think? I don't know. I, I think let's I let's say ink. We'll try ink. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So we'll see what it what it does. Have no idea. We'll see what we get and how well we did relative to the prompt. Well, it's not, not bad. bad. Not oh, bad. Yeah. All right. Eighty-four percent. Yeah, real good. Eighty-four um, percent. Okay. Now I couldn't have gotten um, that all myself. But it's a realistic you painting. To know what, you have to know what um, it's using for an image generator. Google has their own AI. Let's let's go back to the labs here, and they have a image FX tool where you can transform text into images. So they've got something here. So let me got to sign in with Google, and I'm welcome to Test Kitchen. Okay, thank you. And uh, I'm feeling lucky. I'm just going to take their squishy dog toy bagel with fluffy cream cheese. <laughs> and they have a, you know, I mean, this is where all the AIs are kind of, they're all getting images, they're all getting text, they're all getting tools. But I like that little AI prompting quiz. It's kind of a helpful way. That's real good. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, choose, cho it chose something different. A grand monolith. Standing over Mars is seen from a space station window. Ominous, sketchy ink illustration. Now, it's generated four images here, okay? And what you can do is you can change these prompts. This is helping you learn by helping you get an idea of the prompting. So if we wanted a grand monolith, but instead of a monolith, maybe we want a statue, okay? And instead of Mars, we can say Jupiter. And ominous, instead of ominous, we can say peaceful. And instead of ink illustration, we can say watercolor. So it gives us prompting guides to help us get along. So we don't just have to guess it ourselves. Before you go there, Bob, at the lower right corner there, is, is that supposed to be looking through a window? 
Yes. Or is that or is that yeah, a it's space, space station it's a, window? Yeah, as seen from a space oh, station okay. window. Okay. Because there looks like there's other windows there on the side. I thought maybe right. it was going to slide over or something. So now we're going to generate a new image based on changing the prompts a little bit. And there's actually information here on the bottom, too, to help you choose whether you want it sci-fi, chiaroscuro, natural light cinematic, high contrast, to get some different perspectives. And so they're, they're guiding you through the image generation process. So this is entirely different that we generated from AI. And we can take one, it gives, it gives the ability to download them if we want to select an image and we can download and use this. So this is Google's image FX generation tool, but the FX part is this prompting as well. So it helps us create prompts that we might not normally think about by giving us options and to, to work with different tools. So that's another way, another lab effect they're doing. Uh, let's see, I was looking for the something else. Okay, track, track and roll and distant, distant, you know, DJ mode, image effects. Let's see if I'm feeling lucky, but what happens? Um, development experience, okay. So there's IDX for developing software for you can submit an experiment if you want to. I want it. They're, they're just all kinds of tools here. Image I've searched powered by generative AI, the music FX, describe a musical idea and see it come to life. Say what you see, duet, help me script, a text FX, a poem postcards, magic editor. So. I don't know what Magic Editor does. Okay, so that's part of the tools in Google Pixel. So they're giving you things with a Pixel camera that you can get that are not available on other types of tools yet. To full stack is the ability to program and code. Magic Compose is how to reply to text. Then they have lab sessions that they're offering as well with teachers and journalists, um, films that they have where they're showing people doing things in AI in addition to that. Gen AI and Chrome is kind of interesting because Chrome's getting some new generative AI features. So they talk about what's happening. Chrome is gonna let you organize your tabs with AI. They're gonna let you create your own themes with AI, terms of style that you want to have. They're going to help you draft things on the web um, with AI as part of Chrome. They're going to build that into Chrome itself. So they're bringing out these new AI features as well in Google Labs. The search powered by generative AI has some experiments. So they have tools now they're getting ready to do called finding AI powered gift ideas. We can try some of these things out. So let's see if we can find an AI gift idea. Here's some items to get you started. So this search was gifts for a coffee lover. So instead of just bringing you links to websites, it has AI recommendations here that are coming up that are available for you to consider buying. So that's one of the experiments that's happening. Let's go back and take another one. Bring ideas to life, create your own image. If you can't, they're building this into Chrome. So they actually let you do a search where you can draw a picture of a capybara wearing a chef's hat and cooking breakfast, I think. So it right in the search box, it'll start to generate an AI image. So they're changing things in Google Chrome. They're, they're testing these out to see what might work and what people might find appealing. So rather than having to open a gen image generator, you can just type in a search for an image, just say draw, and it'll prompt Google to draw an image for you as opposed to waiting. And so another experiment, get toad tips. We use it while browsing. Up in the upper right here, there is now a G icon right here where my mouse is pointing. Let's see what happens when I click on that. Now I'm getting the generative AI information. So I can get 
key AI powered key points. I can get information about the source. I can have related search. So let's generate this and see. So it'll actually get key points from this website for me just by clicking the G icon. So as you know, Microsoft Edge has incorporated Copilot a lot into Google, into their Edge browser, so that when you, you have, want to get an AI you know, function, you'll get AI results. So Google's looks like they're experimenting and in introducing this AI tool into Google research. So it tells a little bit about the AI experiment we get. So now I know a little bit better what we're looking at. So let's go back. And they've got some more ad tips. Unleash your inner musician with Viola the Bird. This is maybe what I did. Okay, so let's play this and see what happens. Okay, this is Viola the Bird. It's loading. It's a cello inspired instrument. So it says drag slowly and steadily left to right to play. Boy, okay. I'm dragging with my mouse. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. We can get that another way freestyle. Okay. This is an interesting little experiment. So we can record it as well and save it for a future activity. I don't know what the difference is. Oh, the concert is the concert image style. Freestyle is just kind of a in on you know in the in the wild type of thing but you can literally just drag your mouse back and forth across this to create a, a song kind of interesting what the what you're able to do with ai and create that so they also have the games you can play oh there's blob opera that okay so i wanted to really this one was so cool now i finally found where they are blob opera okay so Play four voices in cities around the world with the help of machine learning. So you can act. I'm going to click on his mouth here. Right? That's the tutorial. Okay. So let's skip the tutorial. We're going to take the blobs on tour. Okay. So it's going to give me the ability to record a song. Let's go on tour. Okay, so we're going to go to, let's go to Paris, France, and we're going to take the blogs on tour, and we can record a song here. We can ask it to use something for me. So let's take uh, Farah Jaka, okay? So it's animating the voices here while we're working with, we can go to New York and it's going to bring us in a New York setting here. And we can, where I got the saints go marching in, but let's take Summertime by George Gershwin. <laughs> these are These are generative by their AI as we're actually watching it. So that's where I found their their tools was in oh, other things I, like I that. I just found another way to waste time. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, these are experiments, so you don't know. Music is is changing a lot with AI because it was always a little bit harder to generate. And what well, this is kind of demonstrating the animation tools that you can get with different ones. I have no idea what this geo artwork game does. But these are games that give us the ability where we can get guess where the artworks were created. So we can try places and see what it's going to do. So we can move the pen, the pin to guess. Where is this located? I have no clue where it's located. But you can literally drag the pin uh, around and drag you know, where you want to move the pin here to drag it. Let's say 
Germany? I have no idea. Let's view it on Google Arts and Culture, and we'll learn a little bit about it. It's at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I had no idea that was there. And so this is actually a 3D view of, of what we're looking at at the Institute there. Just another tool that is available, another game you can play, another experiment. So let's see if we can try this AI if images to life. Do we have to? We don't have to use the Google tool here, but you can see in my browser, I've got this little G here, which brings up the Google search side panel. And so we can actually type in something here. Let's say draw a cat sitting on a wooden table. And let's see if it draws anything. I have no idea if it's going to. So it is going to give me some AI generated art here. It'll also pull up images and image search, but it's generating something for me if I want to. And so these are available for me to export and use and edit if I want to. So it sounds like, it looks like what Google's doing with a lot of their AI is they're trying out a lot of different things with it to get you to try different things. So they've got TextFX. I have no idea what's this, but it's an experiment that allows you to expand the possibilities. So you can actually look, oh, it looks like, okay, so trying out trying out a tool so we can look like we can evaluate a topic through different points of view. We can type in a topic that has Sundays. Let's run this just to see what it's gonna do. I have no idea what it's gonna do. I haven't used this tool before. So it created some text from me and I can, apparently apply different functions with it. So I want to find words in a category that start with a chosen letter, a similes, create a simile about a thing or a concept. So let's try a simile about a dilemma and see what it does. So it's actually, go, it's, it's another way of prompting for text. So a dilemma, keeping a secret, a secret is like a precious jewel. Locked away in the vault of your mind, guided by, guarded by the fierce dragon of your conscience, but carrying a secret. So it's interesting how it uh, creates some effects there. Just just another way of prompting text. So you know, if you think AI is done, there's just a lot more coming up that we may not have even tried to to figure out how to do and other things that are out there as well. And so we're going to see more and more of this as it gets released, as it gets, you know, tried out in different ways, as we try and see things that are going to be happening. This is the latest drop, DJ mode in Music FX. Uh, it's an exp let's generate your own music. It's based on Google's Music LM and DeepMind's novel watermarking technology, Synth ID. So it's based on Google's LM and it says Google DeepMind novel watermarking synth ID to embed a digital watermark in the outputs. Uh, I have no idea what it's gonna do. If we can start it somewhere, let's see. If we wanna play it at a prompt, DJ mode, let's play. Swirling phasers, vaporware, muddy low end. Interesting, we can add prompt, so we can make it progressive house, but we can delete a prompt here and we'll get some different. So it's generating different types of music for us and a lot of people have been frustrated with music generation capabilities in AI because they have not seen, we'll get rid of swirling phasers here and vaporware and this will just do Irish folks see what it does not not too great okay so you know, but we can see other types of things some tones are going to be good some are going to be a little bit different I had a prompt here Irish can you hear it now there are just different tools that are out there that are all available for you 
to take advantage of in Google. So this is, let me try the G icon here. So it's going to pull up something on the right hand side that's going to let me do things with the, the generative AI that gives me capabilities. Route 66 drafting, playing the horn, playing the contrabassoon. So they're doing a lot with music now, it seems, as there's a lot more demand or interest in doing 